And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, Xeno Shift is an amazing, super entertaining cooperative game in which you are Marines defending your base against aliens coming in. I still have the game right here. Lots of fun and I don't plan to get rid of it anytime soon. Today we're taking a look at three small pack expansions. We have the Grafting Lab expansion, the Psychogenics Lab expansion, and the Hive expansion. The Hive expansion adds more aliens. The other two expansions add more stuff. Here's a bit of a closer look at them. first expansion that we're going to look at is the Hive expansion, and this one is pretty simple. You're basically just going to be adding in more enemy cards. And so let's just take a look at some of these cards. First we have the Swarm Hound. Uh, this is a uh, Wave 1. I'm going to show you the Wave 1 stuff so it gets worse as time goes by. Um, so we got the, the, this one, and we also have the Flesh Kick Swarm. This is First of all, one of the nastiest pictures in the game, but just kind of a really evil guy. I mean, he's really not that powerful to begin with, but he gets one power and one hit point for each troop that's been killed in the lane this round, so he comes up later on. Now, one of the things that's interesting is these are shuffled into the deck, and I like this because you might not see four flesh tick swarms. I mean, you might, but you're going to see a much more wider variety of monsters as time goes by. The artwork, as you can see, is both good and extremely disgusting. Uh, here they do the damage to the first two troops. The ambush larva does the first two troops in lane two damage when it's revealed. And every time this one kills an enemy, it gains two health. So don't let it kill anything. This guy here basically makes your first troop attack other people. The living nest. All right, I believe we're now into wave two. We are. This enemy, when he's killed, the next enemy gets plus two power and plus two hit points. So he kind of sets up for the next person. The Death Maul. Now this one brings in that Magic the Gathering poison ability, essentially where if he damages a troop, period, he kills that troop. So you can have a really powerful guy, he only does two damage, but if he hits at all, your troop is dead. I hate this guy, I hate him. Also, he looks really scary. And we got the Juggernaut, who every time he moves forward, he gets plus two power. And he starts at the end, so he's just running towards you and getting bigger and stronger. Really cool, until he gets to you. The Mimic basically copies the first guy in line and he fights. The Necro Stinger, if he kills a troop, and you'll notice a lot of these monsters have to do with your troops and manipulating your troops or being like your troops here. If this guy kills a troop, he basically kills, does the, that troop's damage to the next guy in line. The Lasher Worm, still in wave two here, when this one reverses the order, then hits two of them. And he gets plus one power for each troop in lane when it's revealed. <laughs> These are just really nasty guys. Now we're at wave three. The Grave Titan Tarantula. This guy kills your top discard pile. Burns him, which is really annoying. And then he gets additional power and hit points equal to the resource cost of that burn troop. Mm. This one makes me mad just thinking about it. Using, basically burning someone good. Now hopefully when he shows up, your top troop card is someone not that big of a deal. But that's still pretty impressive. The Gore Mauler. This one is very similar to the other Gore, but he's bigger and stronger. Then we got the Death Shrieker and the Scythe Beetle. This guy placed him at the end of the lane. When he's revealed, if a troop uses a special ability or an equipment ability, that troop takes four damage. you got to use special abilities at this point in the game when this guy shows up, but he's killing you. And then we have the Night Runner. The first time he attacks, he gets plus four power and does his damage before the troops attack. So the first time he hits, he hits for ten and does it first. So he's likely going to kill one of you guys right away and then come onward. So you can see these aren't harder than the original enemies. They're just an, they're just they're just as hard, but they add some more. So that is the hive expansion, and there's more than just one of each of these monsters, and you shuffle them into your appropriate waves. Then we have the psychogenics expansion. Now what this expansion does is it brings psychogenic cards, which you can see because they have this purple icon at the bottom of the card. Now these are equipment cards. Each trooper can only have one psychogenic card at all. 
and they can't be removed or traded from a troop once it's equipped. You can't move them around, which isn't that big of a deal. I don't think that restriction's too terribly difficult. Um, they're just basically there. And you also have the Psychogenics Lab, which is a new base type thing that you can operate. Anyway, we have the Mind Blast, which I like a lot. This is, this, I don't know if this one's my favorite, but the, the troop could take any number of damage once per round, and then one enemy takes that much damage back. Near the end of the game, when you have those huge enemies attacking you, this might be the thing that wins it for you. Although mind control is pretty fun, basically where you flip over the top monster and they do half damage to someone else. Regeneration allows that troop to heal half their hit points each round. A psychic shield here, they can prevent two damage from someone else. That's good, but I think I like regeneration better. A shock wave, which once per round, they can just hit someone for three damage and send them to the back of the line. That could be pretty handy, especially in the early game. Telekinesis, um, where once per round, this troop can place an item card from your discard pile into your hand. That's okay. You're basically, you're pulling a weapon or something. These are neat. I really like the theming of them. And the Grafting Lab expansion is pretty similar. Comes with the Grafting Research. Um, but these are the same thing, where you can only have one. So the other ones, are think of them are special abilities. These basically upgrade your equipment. So for example, the Hy Harpy Biomech Wings basically can turn anyone into a paratrooper, which is awesome. The Arm Blades here give you plus one damage. The Buzz Blade gives you basically a plus two overkill. You kill someone, do two damage to the next person in line. The Explosive Implants, which might be my favorite, when that troop's killed, someone takes four damage. Hey, if the enemy is going to do this sort of nonsense, then why can't I do it too? The exoskeleton, which is similar to like an aura from a fantasy thing. Anyone who damages this troop takes a damage, and then you can also prevent two damage. And then the fusion limbs, once per round, they can deal a revealed enemy two damage and put them at the end of the lane. So these are some cool weapons. None of them are super expensive. Well, the exoskeleton is pretty good. My favorite, I think, is the explosive implants and I guess probably the mind control. Um, so these can easily be added in as equipment cards and especially if you're using the grafting research or the psychogenics lab. Not much here to say really these add more things if you were only going to get one i think i would get the hive expansion just because more monsters i think just a differentiation in monsters is good the game already came with a lot of equipment and every game that i've played of xeno shift we're using different sets of equipment uh, but you're fighting the same monsters all the time the uh, hive expansion will change it you never know what monsters you're going to face which i think is cool if the the other two i'd get them both at the same time probably essentially I guess you can have one graft and one psychogenic thing. So that's cool that they're different, but say they play by basically the exact same rules. The extra stuff though is cool. I like the wings. I, it just it just kind of neat and adds a theming flavor. It's like, ah, the aliens are breaking in. All right, let's start using psychic powers. Let's just start using, you know, here's a new exoskeleton for you. So just more cool equipment. All three of them are fine. All three of them add to the game. I'm not sure that they're essential. You don't need more stuff. I thought the game was fine as it is, but it is cool to have more things to play within this sandbox of Xeno Shift. Dice Tower Judgment, these are nasty, but approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.